Hey tubers, it's me again, Ben. While we're in the beginning of winter here in New Jersey, I f and I can't really fish, I figured I would start a, um, a series that I'm going to entitle A Beginner's Arsenal. Um, I'm gonna start with um, what you can see behind me, my uh, fishing poles and my um, reels. The purpose of this video is not to show you, you know, how smart I am or how how I I have the best equipment. That that's not the my intent here. My intent here is to show you um, how I started, where I started from, and the progression of uh, poles that I had and and to what I use today. Now I had a lot of help uh, picking out my poles. Uh, the guys at Macho Yak TV, Jake and Daniel. Uh, I think they were with me when I picked out all my poles except for one, and they pretty much picked them for me. So I really did not know um, how to buy a rod and reel. Um, I've bought one rod and reel of my own, and that was my last one, and I'll cover that one last. I'm going to start with the uh, probably the first pole I had, maybe the second. This pole I used in salt water, um, and you'll see when I show you this pole, that I knew nothing about fishing because there's no way you would use this pole in salt water if you knew anything about fishing. Unless you were planning on catching uh, minnows maybe or something like that. So I'm going to start with that pole. And that's this one. My brother and I used to spend uh, a, a few weeks in the summer down at my grandparents' house when we were kids in uh, Forked River. And my grandfather had a couple of boats and my brother and I got to the point where we, we got old enough, and this is the 60s, the late 60s, early 70s. Back then, there wasn't the boat traffic in uh, Barney Gap Bay and, and, um, and all the uh, lagoons that there, was, that there is today. So my brother and I, when we reached a certain age, we were allowed to take the boat out by ourselves. I don't remember what age that was. It could have been 14, 15. I don't really know. And like I said, this is probably the late 60s, early 70s that we got this pole. It's a, uh, it, it's made by Sears and, well, I don't know if it was actually made by Sears. It was made for, I'm guessing, Sears and Roebuck. It, it feels, if you feel it, it's pretty heavy. It's a solid pole. It's, uh, it's only five and a half feet long. And it's got the, um, the enclosed uh, reel. I, I guess they would call this a bait caster, but it's not really. It's a, uh, this is more a beginner's pole. And it's a pretty solid pole. It's got a cork handle. I really have no information on it because it's 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 so old. I have the model numbers. It's a uh, the the pole itself is a 535.30107. That's the model number. And the model number of the reel is a 779-312160. So I, I have a feeling that this could be a Ted Williams model that was made by Shakespeare for Sears Roebuck, but I, I have no proof of that. I Googled it, and that's the the nearest I could tell so I don't know how much this is worth it's probably not worth a lot of money this is basically where I started fishing um, it probably already came with line on it and a lure and a little kit and um, my grandfather would uh, would throw the um, the bait trap off the dock uh, early morning or late the night before and the next morning it would be full of minnows so my brother and I would would fish from the dock or we'd, we'd take uh, my grandfather's little 13-foot uh, um, Boston whaler out uh, in, the, in the lagoons or in the uh, maybe in the bay but um, that's where I started fishing and you, you could tell by the size of this pole like I said it was 5-6 I, I wasn't catching stripers or bluefish on it I didn't even know what a striper or a bluefish was back then I'd never seen one, so uh, I think this is something maybe my grandfather did just to keep us occupied and out of his hair, which is okay. I mean, if I, if I was a grandpa, I'd probably do the same thing, but uh, my second pole, and this isn't really my pole. This is pretty similar, if you look at them, to the one I just showed you. I'm trying not to get the pole stuck in the ceiling fan. They're pretty similar. In fact, they're probably made by the same company. This is a Shakespeare ugly stick that I bought for um, Laura. 
I wanted to try and get her into fishing when I first started. So I bought her this pole and I used it a few times. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't having success with the regular fishing pole. So I would just grab her pole and, and throw it in the boat and I'd take it out with me. And I caught a few fish with it. Uh, I think the largest pickerel I caught, I'll see if I can find the video and, and put it up, uh, I caught on this pole. So um, I'm sure uh, Jake and Daniel laughed at me and and uh, there, I got some uh, some comments from from uh, some people on my on, on my uh, video that I that, that I put up with this poll, but um, it got me started. I mean, I can't I can't put it down because it got me started. I caught a couple fish on, and it got me wanting to fish some more. So that's probably the key to to uh, to fishing. Uh, do whatever gets you to the next trip out. This is the Shakespeare Ugly Stick, the one I got for a This is a five foot pole, so it's it's actually shorter. It's actually shorter than the um, than the one than the Sears model, the old Sears model one. I think I probably bought this for her maybe five years ago or so, four years maybe. Um, it, it came as a combo. Uh, the model number is SCL 1101, um, and the the action on it is light, four to ten pound. Uh, four to ten pounds. The gear ratio is 3.5 to 1, which isn't very good. And the line capacity is uh, number 6 to number 10. So, And then there's this one. This is rod number 3. This was not my third rod, by the way. I'm leaving a couple out. Uh, I'm just highlighting the ones that, that, I, that I think uh, kept me going. Um, this is a this is a Shakespeare Navigator. I got it at Dick's for ten bucks, probably the beginning of last year, beginning of the season last year, maybe April or May. Um, I didn't have many much in the way of fishing poles at the time, and the one I had wasn't cutting it, and I didn't have a lot of money because I wasn't working. So um, I went to Dick's with uh, Jake and Daniel, and um, Jake said, "Well, why don't you get this one? It's only fifteen bucks." So it's um. For 15 bucks, if I used it twice and broke it, so what? But um, this caught me some fish. I have to say, it's um, it's it's an it's a medium action pole. It's six to 12 pound, but um, it, it's it's pretty light. It's like right in between. So it's kind of, it was at the time it was kind of perfect for me. Um, and I caught I caught some fish on it. I've caught, I've caught a lot of fish on this. So. I can't uh, complain. I got my my fifteen dollars worth out of this pole. For fifteen dollars, it's not a top of the line fishing pole, real the real or the rod, but it's it's good for beginners. If I mean, if you have a couple younger kids, um, and you you decided you want to take them fishing and they really don't know how to fish, get a couple of these. Thirty bucks. If they break it, so what? That brings me to the next one, which is the exact same model, except this is the blue one. And you see, I have a um, spinner bait on it. I I don't think I fished it yet. I was sitting in the garage, uh, rigging rigging my poles, killing time, wishing I was fishing. So I just I just threw this thing on and put some braid on it and a uh, fluorocarbon leader for in case I got to go fishing. But this is the exact same pole. Um, and the model number for both of them is the uh, NSPR602M for the rod, and the reel is the NSP, for the red one is the 30R, and for the blue one is the 30B. Um, the, uh, the gear ratio on this reel isn't really that bad for a $15 reel. It's only got one bearing, though, but the, uh, the gear ratio is 5.5 to 1, and the line capacity is, is a 4 to 8 pounds. I think I might even have 10 pound braid on here with a eight pound fluorocarbon. Um, but like I said, I, I like the other one so much that I got this one as, as just a, a beat up pole that I could use to have another pole on the boat. It'd, it'd be one less pole I had to rig. So um, I, can, I can carry up to four poles comfortably on my kayak. So this is one of the four. The next one of the four is my ultralight. Jake and Daniel uh, uh, got me to get this also. 
Uh, so, because when we went when we went trout fishing, we were fishing for smaller trout. It was at the, it was probably at the beginning of the stocking season, so the, the they were small. So, um, they had me get this pole. It's a uh, Quantum Ultralight uh, model XT ninety five O two ULB. It's five feet, and it, it's called the Quantum Extra Light IM six. This is not the reel that came with it. That that reel kind of died on me. That was also a Quantum. Um, when that reel died, uh, the bell broke over here. So um, I I bought another reel. I bought an Akuma um, Stratus. Um, it's the SB ten CL. It's a nice reel, and I have a little. Uh, this this bait's probably too big for the pole. I'm gonna try and start catching a little bit bigger fish. And if you even notice, I have I have this Texas rig. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. I just I'm just trying different things. Like I said, I was in my garage bored one day, and um, I was just fiddling around with the poles, putting different baits on them, putting different line on them. Just just wishing I was fishing. So this is that's what I did. I don't know if I'm ever even going to get to try this on here. I may take it off and put something else on. I don't know. But um, and that brings me to the pole <laughs> that I wanted to toss in the water the most. My bait caster. This was my first bait caster. Um, Jake and Daniel um, were with me when I bought this. I had never used a bait caster before. I didn't even know that, that there was such a thing as a bait caster. Like I said, um, I've now fished two seasons, about a year and a half total time. Um, but besides a couple trips up to Paradox Lake where I caught a fish or two, you know, every year and then didn't fish again till the next year. But um, I actually caught one of my biggest fish on this and probably my first uh, decent sized fish. I got probably, uh, I couldn't weigh it. I'm gonna say it was probably a two and a half, maybe, maybe three pound um, bass up at Paradox Lake. Uh, I'll show the video clip. And I made a really good cast, but it seems like ever since then my my casting has gone downhill. And I think it may have something to do with the reel. You know, Jake lent me his pole. I went fishing with him in Winding River Park not uh, not long before we we bagged it for the season. And um, he let me try his pole, and it was so much easier to cast. I don't know what the deal is with this. It's like I could set it down, and it'll bird nest on its own. It just got to the point where I was ready to throw it in the lake. And I'm thinking it could be the reel. Uh, as I was looking this up, trying to get some of the uh, specs, I saw some reviews, and, and almost everybody hated the reel. It broke, or this, or that. And I don't mean to knock a uh, quantum. Um, like I said, this this has caught me one of my biggest fish, so I don't I don't, I don't mean to to not quantum, but I have a feeling this reel is on its way, and I didn't take great care of it either. I didn't oil. I probably didn't oil it. I I really don't know how to care for a, a reel yet. Um, that's another goal I have this year uh, is is to learn how to take care of my fishing poles because I'm going to start buying more expensive fishing poles, um, so I'm going to have to take care of them. And this is the Quantum Octane QX24. It came as a combo. Um, the pole is uh, six foot six, and it's a medium heavy action, eight to seventeen pound. And the uh, the reel is a six six point two to one five bearing um, with a line capacity of twelve. Um, I have to say, it's it's not very beginner friendly. Uh, if you wanna if you wanna introduce somebody to the uh, world the bait casting I would suggest you don't start with this pole um, may, maybe I'm just not I, I'm not used to um, bait casting I, I don't know I mean I can't say I, I, I haven't been fishing long enough to know what I'm doing wrong I'll probably replace this reel eventually maybe and see how that works out but um, we'll see so And that brings me to my babies. Daniel and Jake um, did a video about the, the McGill Skeet Reese uh, fishing pole. And I saw it in Dick's and I thought it was time for me to get a new pole. So I bought it. I don't know, it was like a hundred bucks or, or something like that. This particular one is the model number WME SR SH 611SH. It's uh, 6 foot 11 and it's for um, Shaky Head Senko. They say it's got the S curve technology, and you can really feel you can really feel with this pole. 
and I love this poll. I, I, I paired it with a, um, a Fluger President reel. Uh, that was a Daniel suggestion. It's model number 6930. It's got a 5.2 to 1 gear ratio. It's 10 bearing and has a line capacity of 4 to 10 pounds. So I think this is a this is a good pair. I, I caught my um, I caught that large, I don't know, three, four pound smallmouth on this uh, on this pole. And I also caught the um, the two and a half pound or two pound ten ounce bass in a Winding River Park on this pole. So I've caught a couple of a nice fish with this pole. That brings me to the last one. This is my newest pole. And I gotta be really careful. I don't get this in the ceiling fan, or I'm gonna be. I haven't gotten to use this pole yet. This is brand new. I've probably had it for a month. I can't wait to use this pole. I put a, um, I put, I bought a, I bought an Akuma Stratus V um, model SV two six six LX, and put it on. It's a new reel. I haven't even used it yet. I've, I've and I've got uh, some braid on here too. Um, I'm not sure. It's probably twelve pound. I guess I'm not sure. <laughs> to tell you the truth, um, and I paired that with eight pound. Uh, uh, floral and I haven't had any any success at all with uh, Carolina rigs and this pole like the other the other one the other one said shaky head and Senko this one says swim bait and Carolina rig so I put a Carolina rig on it I'm trying to go heavier um, I've got a, uh, a tungsten weight on here because that's supposed to be good for uh, sense in the bottom so I Carolina rigged it with a tungsten weight. It's not a real heavy one, but it's heavier than what I normally use. So um, I'm going to try this the first the first hint of spring because because I really can't wait to use it. Um, I have a feeling this will be a lot more user friendly than the uh, than the quantum. So we'll see. So there you have my um, my arsenal of fishing poles. The next video, I'm going to uh, go over some of the baits that I've uh, I've had success with um, here in New Jersey um, and at Paradox Lake. So, um, as always, thank you for watching my video. And a special thanks to my subscribers. Again, thanks a lot for watching and uh, have a good night. God bless. Mm -hmm.